through the animals, we transform the human race. So our animals um, are here really to help us open our hearts and bring in love and raise that vibration. Um, there's so many of my clients um, uh, come, they, they, have, they think they have a, a, a problem with their animal. And as we talk to the animal, the person opens their heart. Their heart opens. And, um, and they realize that they came to me through their animal but there's a transformation that happens for them. And they, they do become closer uh, to their animal, but they also learn about. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the Shifting Dimensions podcast. I'm your host, Jumi Moses, and I have the pleasure of speaking with Lynn Schuster. Lynn is a telepathic animal communicator, intuitive Reiki master, teacher, and artist, and she is also the founder of Animal Spirit Talker. Lynn, welcome to Shifting Dimensions. It's a pleasure to have you here. Oh, thank you so much, Jumi. I'm so excited to be here with you. Of course. I'm so excited to have you on the show. Um to talk about your gift and your ability to speak with animals, but also there's like an underlying thing there too about telepathy, right? So mm -hmm. I know that you say that you believe that we're all born with the ability to telepathically communicate, but a lot of us don't realize that we are. And we've also been told by society that verbal communication is how we can talk to each other. So I just want to hear more about what is telepathy? If someone was curious about that, and why do you think a lot of us forget that we have this gift? Okay, yeah. Um, so when I talk to the animals, um, it's it's very mind it's a very mindful conversation. And I think that's one reason why um, many of us have forgotten because it does take, it does take practice and it takes mindfulness. Um, and so often um, when we're in conversation with each other, um, a, a lot of times we're already thinking about what we're going to say to somebody else before they even finish their sentence. And so with te telepathy, it's very much, I need to listen. I need to be with go within i need to do a lot of deep belly breathing it's all about our breath feeling our bellies rise and fall um and then when i'm talking to the animals i'm truly listening to them i'm in a neutral space um i've cleared my mind chatter the the um the the deep belly breathing helps me to clear my mind chatter so that my mind is is in a soft place what I mean by that is there's no, I don't hear my thoughts. Like right now, my mind is in a really soft place. I'm not even sure exactly what the next words are that are going to come out of my mouth, but I know they're guided. You know, you've asked me a question and I know the answer here in my heart. So it's bringing that forth in a gentle way. Um, uh, so when I talk to the animals, um, I use a photograph of them usually a photograph. I can talk to them also when they're in person, but I have clients all over the country. So um, it's not usually, we're not usually together. Deep belly breathing, feeling my belly rise and fall. I close my eyes and visualize that animal's picture in my mind's eye. State my intention is to speak with them. It's very, the intention is, that's another thing about this conversation is there's intention. And a lot of times when when I'm talking to others, just jabbering on and, you know, I don't really have that much intention about the conversation. This is there's a lot of intention here. Um, I open my heart. It's all about love to me. When I'm talking to the animals, the animals bring that love in. Um, I visual after I visualize their picture, I state my intention to speak with them. When, and I wait a moment and I, I in my mind's eye, I'm looking and I'm listening. I, I'm looking for pictures. So a lot of times they'll show me pictures in my mind's eye. Um, I might hear their voices. The animals' voices usually sound more childlike and innocent than my normal mind chatter. Um, 
um, I might feel their feelings in my heart. A lot of times I just experience, I experience huge heart openings, just love pouring out so big that my eyes tear up and it's like, I can hardly even talk. Um, there's just so much love from them. Um, sometimes, uh, it's a gut feeling, that sense of knowing that something is true. Um, and so we all have these four metaphysical senses, clairvoyance, clairaudience, clairsentience, claircognizance. Um, we all have them. It's a matter of knowing that and understanding that and, um, and, and exploring. Um, and so te telepathy is, it for me, is that next step. Um, I'm I'm looking at you. I'm visual. I'm seeing your body language, um, and and then if I um, if I relax into it, we can have conversation telepathically. Now animals are much more um, open to it than humans. Um, I believe that all the animals, all the species, speak to each other telepathically. They're already doing it. Um, um, we're the ones that have forgotten. Uh, what During COVID, I would sit out here. This is my outdoor office. <laughs> um, I'd sit, sit out here and I would talk to the birds at my bird feeder or the squirrels or the, you know, the other uh, wild animals, the rabbits. Um, and what the birds told me is they all knew what was going on with us. They all knew that the humans were struggling. They didn't know what COVID was but they knew we were struggling. They could feel the fear that we were carrying. And then they also noticed um, that we weren't conversing as much. We weren't g gathering as much. You know, there weren't picnics outside and, and things like that. Um, and so they, the birds uh, were the um, like the telephone line. They would take information from my backyard to somebody else's backyard to somebody else's backyard and share that information um, with each other. So they knew there was something going on with the humans. Um, so yeah, they all they all talk to each other. Um, and I've noticed um, as I the last this last week, more and more animals are coming into my yard, um, and. I think that, you know, they really, they're, they're very interested in what's going on over here. You know? <laughs> they want to help me. <laughs> That's amazing. So just to make sure I fully understand, telepathy is more of like a psychic way of communicating, right? So from one human being to the other human being, you know, you've heard, a lot, I've heard a lot of people say this and I've experienced this as well, where I'll think about someone mm -hmm. and want to call them and then they call me. And it's like, oh my gosh, you know, people say that's coincidental, but I would say that that's a form of te telepathic communication. Would you agree? Correct. Okay. Yes, you ping each other. I always, I have a friend and we say we ping each other. I'll think of her and then she'll call me, you know, it might not be that same day, but, um, you know, yeah. yes, we, or we see each other in the grocery store or yeah, there's, um, things things don't happen by accident we're we're in constant contact with each other I, I like to I like to visualize us as um each individual as a radio tower we're a constantly broadcasting um, and if we realized how important our thoughts and our feelings are we would be much more careful about how we think uh, when we when we're feeling love that's what we're broadcasting when we're feeling resentment or anger, that's the radio station. That's what's playing on a radio station. That's what we're broadcasting. And so it's really important to for me to really understand and know what I what I want. Um, how do I want to treat others, uh, two legged and four legged and eight legged and you know wings and fins and you know how do I want to um, what do I want my story to be? Um, it's really important to watch carefully what my thoughts are um, because I'm projecting that on others, um, you know, and, and so way more than we imagine. We're not, we're not separate. We're, you know, we're, we're um, interconnected. Yes. You're, it's absolutely fascinating how we, you know, 
how our thoughts kind of feed our reality. And to your point, we can pick up other people's thoughts if we're not fully aware. Like mm -hmm. you might walk into a room and you just think, why do I feel so down? I'm all of a yep. sudden I'm feeling kind of, you know, unhappy. And maybe a lot of people in that room are unhappy and you're, you're picking that up telepathically almost. Um, so That's it's fascinating. When did you realize that you could communicate with animals? How young were you? I was probably, let's see, well, I was in second grade when I turned it off. Um, I, yeah, so that was seven years old. And I knew there was something bigger than me. Um, and, um, but I didn't have anybody to talk to about that. And I thought I was weird because nobody else seemed to have the same kind of conversations. And I remember say, saying to myself, I'm not doing that anymore. And it felt like I just landed whoop, on the ground, um, um, like a gravity hit. Oh, I am here. I'm, you know, I've fully come into my, into my body and I've let go of my spiritual connection. And what happened um, around that same time, my, my eardrum burst. I had got a really severe earache and um so I don't know if it was my actual eardrum, but something burst and, and my ear started bleeding and I had, uh, you know, I had to go to the emergency room and all that. But the other thing that happened is I got, I, um, I got depression as a young, and I didn't know what it was. I, I, and I didn't know I had depression until I was a young adult. Um, I went to counseling for that. And, um, and my counselor helped me to um, um, discern that that's what that was. I have low grade chronic depression. Once I found that out, I I I thought, Ma, I can do something about that. And I, we started really exploring my childhood, and that's when I really remembered that I could I could do this. Um, and from there, um, I started meditating. I learned how to meditate. Um, I started with like five minutes of meditation and worked into 15, a half hour, an hour, um, where I was able to sit in deep meditation for longer periods of time. And that led me to um, the meeting my mentor. Her name was Re Rebecca Moravec. Um, she, um, <clears throat> she was an animal communicator. She was a Reiki master teacher. And she also explored shamanic journey work. And so I worked with her from um, 2002 until she passed in 2014. Um, and in, in 2014, I, I decided I could go professional. And so I've been um, doing this professionally since 2014. Um, so I don't have depression anymore. Um, I've learned how to really open my heart and trust and the animals have helped me to do that. Um, um, so, yeah, now I have so much gratitude that I'm, I feel like I should have worn my I'm back t-shirt <laughs> today. <laughs> I love that. What a, what an incredible story. It's mm -hmm. funny that you had a realization of these gifts when you were younger and kind of shut it down because it was shunned. And so many people have similar experiences and then eventually you know, they find their way back to it due to some sort of difficulty in their life, right? For you, it was depression. Mm -hmm. um, and you found your way back to owning that gift and kind of following that purpose. So when animals communicate with you, and I know that you kind of talked about it a little bit more in the beginning, but I really want the listeners to understand, like, do you get words come into your head? Do you get images? I know you said sometimes it's a feeling, it's a knowing. How, can you mm -hmm. just kind of talk about that a little bit more, how you're able to communicate with them? Yeah. So also the other thing about me is um, when I was very young, I realized um, I was artistic. And so I would, cre I created, I, um, right now I'm a fiber artist as well. I do that in my spare time. Um, but I would, um, from when I was young, I would visualize that, that art or a lot, I did a lot of uh, needlework. And so I would visualize what I wanted to do and then get the materials to do it and bring it to fruition. Um, so I do see a lot of pictures. So a lot of times the stories that the animals show me are pictures. 
One time, my cat, he's no longer with us. This was quite a few years ago, but I was um, upstairs um, uh, changing the sheets, you know, in, in my bedroom. And he was in the hallway batting a toy down down the hallway. It's a long, long, narrow hallway, wood floor. And um, I heard him say, I love this hallway. It's just like a bowling alley. <laughs> So for him, I heard I heard the words, um, um, and I thought my first thought was, and it was earlier on in communication, was how in the world does he know what a bowling alley is? And of course, and then I start, I and then I uh, um, I I start picking that all apart and say think that no, I didn't really hear him, um, um, but I, he told me it was like a bowling alley. I don't think he knows what a bowling alley is, but I do. And so I will get words and pictures that match something that I can relate to. At one point, I read a book, um, Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. It's a fun book. Um, so they hitchhike all over the galaxy, and there's all these different beings and different languages. And they have um, what they call a babble fish they put in, in their ear, and it would translate all the the messages, you know, all the different languages. And so I figure, oh, I must have a babble fish so I can understand what, you know, that we can understand each other. He doesn't know what a bowling alley is, but he knows I know what a bowling alley is. Um, and so, yeah, so I'll get messages. Most often I do see pictures. Uh, yesterday I was, I was talking to um, a, a horse and, and she was telling me um, she didn't want to, um, she didn't want to run the barrels. She was a barrel, she was trained for barrel riding. Um, she didn't want to run the barrels. She wanted to be, she wanted to have babies. She wanted to be a brood mare and she wanted to, um, live with other, in a herd of other brood mares. And so the visual I had was her grazing with her baby with three other brood mares. Um, and so there would be four adults in the herd and then all their babies, you know? Um, and so that was, that was a picture that she showed me. Um, and so from there, then I ask her, um, in my mind, I ask her questions about that. Um, and, and so we, you know, we kind of go, go, I just let the thread, the thread of the conversation flow. Thank you for sharing that. It's, I love how you broke that down that, you know, you might get something that says, oh, this looks like a bowling alley. And although, the animal doesn't know what a bowling alley is. It's almost kind of like that telepathy kind of translates in a way that you're able to understand what they're talking about, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. um, you know, it's so interesting because I really, over the last year and a half, become very fascinated by animals. I was never really into animals. I didn't have an issue with them, but I kind of thought about them as an afterthought, right? Kind of like how you have objects in a space. I kind of thought of them as objects in a space, to be honest. And when I would see people go on and on about their dogs or their cats, I never fully understood it. So then my sister gets a cat and I have to watch her cat for a month, right? And <laughs> it's interesting, you, you kind of see an animal and how they move and how they operate and you realize they have their own intelligence, right? Like they're not human beings, but there's something about the way they move. I don't want to say I can communicate with them, but I could almost tell what what their desires are, even outside of just like, okay, I need to eat. I might be sleepy, but it's just so fascinating. And I just see animals in such a different light, in a very beautiful light. It, they've actually my sister's cat has even opened my heart more. You know, I, I think I've always been a very empathetic part person and very caring, but I think coming across my sister's cat has just opened my, the ability for my heart to love something, right? Um, so yeah, it's just been such an amazing experience. And I'm always fascinated by, I wonder what the animal world is like. So because you are able to communicate with animals, I mean, you're obviously not an animal yourself, so I don't know if you'd be able to answer this question, but how do they view the world? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, that's a lovely question. Um, my tag, my tagline um, for animal spirit talker is, is through the animals, we transform the human race. 
So our animals um, are here really to help us open our hearts and bring in love and raise that vibration. Um, there's so many of my clients um, uh, come, they, they, have, they think they have a, a, a problem with their animal. And as we talk to the animal, the person opens their heart. Their heart opens. And, um, and they realize that they came to me through their animal but there's a transformation that happens for them. And they, they do become closer uh, to their animal, but they also learn about opening their heart and empathy and then going out into the world and treating other people with and animals as well, but other people with more empathy, more compassion, more love, more understanding, which is what, you know, one by one, we are changing the world. And so the animals, um, they'll often tell me they love their job or the, you know, and I'll say, what is, is your job? My job is to take care of my man. My job is, is to, um, you know, to sit with him cause he doesn't feel well and help him feel, um, more peaceful. Their, their job is, is, about, you know, when they, when they come into this world, their job is to help us feel peace, um, empathy, love, compassion, um, you know, all, all, the, all the, the feelings that help us to raise that vibration and, and have more understanding for each other. You know, um, I, I have two horses and two cats, and whenever I leave my horses, I feel so at peace. Um, they are helping me to, to ground and bring in that big love that is here for all of us. Um, and, and this whole conversation that we're having today, my eyes are practically tearing up because I do feel that love. Um, and I feel it through you. Um, so we are having a telepathic conversation. I can feel how much you love your job and, and you love you know, bringing these conversations forth and, um, you love the world, you love, you know, your family, you, you, you have a big open heart and I can feel that, um, through our conversation. Um, and so the animals all, um, domestic or wild, that's what they're here for. They're here to help us, um, uh, with tenderness and, and bringing in that, that love. So they like us. We're not, you know, we're not these yeah. beings that terrorize them sometimes. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's good. Um, yeah. So what would be some cases where a, a client would come out to you to want to communicate with their animal? So what do I mean by that? And in, in what instances would they say, you know what, I, I would, I need more information. I'm not sure what's going on with my animal. I need to go to, um, someone who's able to connect with animals. Could you talk about some of those instances? Yeah. Uh, yesterday I had, uh, again, I'm going back to, to the, the mayor that wants to be a, a, a brood mayor. Um, the way that conversation came about is um, uh, this woman found out about me through one of her friends and she has this mayor who she thought she would barrel race but um, the horse was showing aggression and not liking and, you know, kind of bucking and rearing a little bit and just, and, and even when she was on the ground, she was, um, it, there was, it, it was hard to get her to lunge, what we call lunge. You, you have on the lunge line, you have the horse, you know, go around and either walk or trot and then maybe turn around and, and um, she didn't want to, do that either she you know she was just really saying I, I'm not happy there's something wrong here um and so um it was the reason the reason this woman got this horse was her, her another friend said oh this would be a really good horse for you um she's you know she she'll be really good at barrel racing so they were together for four months and she's finding that this isn't working very well um and she was thinking that she would take her to auction today and to and sell her so she contacted me i think it was wednesday or thursday and i was booked solid um and i 
I said, oh, I really want to help you. We'll keep an open channel here and find a, we'll find a way. We need to talk before Saturday. And I knew I could, I knew that the horse really wanted to talk. So the next day I had a cancellation. So I got in touch with her and said, I have a ca cancellation. Can you, can you, can we talk at this time? And we did. And I know this was all divinely guided. Um, I had the intention, a very strong intention. This horse needs to, we need to talk. Um, the three of us really need to talk. Um, and, and so we started the conversation and we found out she has a, some pain. She has some pain in her lower back. Um, I could feel it. In this case, I could feel. Um, I, I also have some pain in my lower back sometimes, but at that moment I did not. Um, and I started, I got a little twinge and I asked myself, is this mine or is this hers? And I realized it's not mine, it's hers. Okay, so now I know she has some pain in her lower back. Perhaps she could use a chiropractor and get, get balanced. The next thing that happened was I felt, um, deep in, in, um, the back of my neck, deep inside, I felt, uh, more pain. And so she was having pain just above her withers. Well, okay. That makes sense. She doesn't want to saddle on because she's having pain, but this horse really wanted to be in a herd. She didn't want the pressure of um, of barrel racing. She didn't feel like she was that much of an athlete um, to do to do what it takes. And so we talked more about um, what she really wanted. Um, and I got that through pictures. Um, it wasn't it it's more it was more about pictures and feelings. I could feel her anxiety when we talked about barrel racing. I could feel the anxiety come in. And like you were saying earlier, sometimes you pick up on other people's stuff. I was picking up on her anxiety and I could feel it. When we shifted the conversation and I'd ask her, what would you like to do? And she showed me pictures of her, her grazing with um, a, a small herd and babies all around. Um, I knew she wanted to be a broodmare. Um, and so... Um, we had that conversation and her person was so grateful because it shifted everything. She didn't take her to auction today. Um, she is going to do right by her. Um, she's going to find, you know, she's going to research and find a place for her um, to do her work, what she wants to do. And at the end of our conversation, there was so much, the, the, the other human and I had so much emotion about it. That horse brought all this emotion, uh, this beautiful emotion to us about wanting to help her and do right by her. And so we could see the glory in her life um, and how she, you know, um, sometimes we ask our animals and other people to do things they don't really want to do. Um, and I could really feel for her when she gets in the place of being able to be a broodmare, she will feel like me. She will release that. She will be able to release that anxiety and that depression and sadness. And she will find her place and be who she came here to be. Um, so it was a really beautiful and poignant um um, a conversation yesterday, and I knew it was one I knew that I need to needed to have. Um, and so, yeah. So when I'm talking to the animals, I I really I'm so focused on just them with my eyes closed and just focused what my body, what my physical body is telling me. Oh, she has pain. As soon as I acknowledged she had pain in her back and pain in her neck that left my body. Um, as soon as I felt into her, that anxiety, um, and, and that kind of depression, it was more anxiety for her than depression. Um, as soon as I felt that I knew that she didn't, what she was doing wasn't her, it wasn't, you know, her, her life's mission. Um, and so it was, it was just an awesome conversation. Um, and, the mayor, I think, taught 
us more than we helped her. It felt like she also in that that single conversation helped us to realize that we all have gifts. We all have, you know, a, you know, a, a mission that that needs to be fulfilled. Um, and and the rest of the day, I felt so peaceful in my body. Um, it was to me, it was a God sighting. You know, it was I was filled with white light, just that white light pouring everywhere. And the white light to me is is the light of God, the divine, whatever that is. Yes. Um, yeah. So what a powerful story. And I think it goes back to what you said that the animals are here to help us raise our vibration and reach that higher frequency and expand more into love. I mean, just hearing you talk about it, because again, like I said, a lot of people, and I can't speak for everyone, of course, but I know a lot of people where we're just kind of taught to think of animals as objects in our reality, but these are living beings um, who see the world differently and are just a lot of times are in service to us. Um, so it's nice to know that they also have certain desires and, and things they want to experience, right? Um, for themselves. Cause again, I, I never thought about animals having potential anxiety or depression or, you know, or feeling sad. But again, when you sit with an animal and you see how they move, you can see their pain, whether it's physical, you can pick up on certain things. Um, so it's just very fascinating. And did you have to be with the horse in order to um, communicate with it? Do you have to be in front of the animal or can you communicate through pictures as well? Um, so, so I live in Wisconsin and that horse was in, is in New York. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so I had her picture. Um, okay. and, and so, um, yeah, and I, I do love to, to talk to the animals in person as well. Um, it's, it's a different, it's a little different feeling. Um, I, because they're right there, a lot of times I, the focus, I have to really um, really stay focused because I just really want to pet the animals or, you know, when I'm in person, oh, look how cute and just watch them. You know? <laughs> um, so, so when I'm in person, um, uh, it, it's just slightly different, um, still a really good communication, but um, I'm more aware of what their physical body uh, is doing, which I really like that as well. Um, oftentimes people, when, when we're not in the same room or the same space, they'll tell me what, what their animals are doing while I'm having the conversation. Um, I, I talked to a chihuahua last week who um, there's, they have two chihuahuas, um, and one, the one that I was um, fo mainly focusing on, um, really, she was um, had some abuse. She was a rescue, and so she had she had some abuse in her earlier uh, life, and um, she didn't really know how to be a dog. She didn't know how to play. Um, she um, she resource guarded her food a lot, you know. Um, and so we were talking about, um, helping her to release anxiety and that she was in her forever home. This is where you live now. This is so where, where you live now is how you will be treated for the rest of your life. Um, and her person as, as, as we were having this conversation, um, I would yawn. A lot of times I'll yawn during my sessions. It's a release of anxiety or a release of stress and tension. And I was yawning like crazy. You know, she was releasing all this stress and, and tension. And I was kept yawning and the dog was yawning. So we're both, I said, oh, I just yawned. Yeah, she just yawned too. So we're both yawning at the same time without being able to see each other. Um, and then um, she actually, um, she was on the sofa with her her mate, her the other chihuahua. She actually um, initiated play for the very first time in the, I think, I don't know how, I can't remember how long they were together, a year, two years, you know, for, so a, a nice long time. Um, but it was the first time she actually initiated play with with the other, you know, with her sister. Um, her sister always wanted to play with her, but she didn't 
she didn't engage. And so while we were talking about it, about playing and being and, and just, you know, a, a, being a dog, she actually started playing while we were talking. That to me is amazing. That to me is, okay, there's, you know, there's validation that what I'm seeing, hearing, thinking, feeling is real in real time. It's not, you know, it's right here, right now. Um, probably 95% of the time I'm I'm not in person because mm -hmm. um, because I have clients all over, actually all over the world. I have, mm -hmm. you know, people are finding me now too in, in other countries because of the internet. Um, so, but yeah, so about 5% of the time I'm, I'm with them in person. Yeah. Do you do a screening of the owner before you have a conversation with them? Because I spoke with a channel once, um, and, you know, she was able to channel animals. And she says that sometimes when she comes across someone who she doesn't really like their energy, she might get, a you know, she could feel that they probably are mistreating their animals. She kind of chooses not mm -hmm. to work with them. So do you ever, you know, screen the owner before having a session? Mm -hmm. Um, I, so what I do is when I have, pe when people sign up, uh, for uh, a session. Oh, the crows are really, crows are talking, and the crows are talking to you about. <laughs> what are they saying? <laughs> they're talking, they're, they're adding in that, that um, sometimes people are um, uh, not who they say they are. Mm -hmm. Sometimes they will, um, they will not be truthful. That's what the crows are saying. Okay. <laughs> just, I don't know. They just came. They're not usually in my yard, but there they are. Oh, that's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. They're all yapping about. Yeah. Don't talk to. Yeah. Watch out for um those. Watch out for those that are untruthful. Mm. Use your discernment and and recognize when somebody's lying to you. Wow. Um, so that kind of goes with the conversation about, you know, um, vetting the people ahead of time wow. that you're asking about. But okay, that being said, we got it. <laughs> is is that is that message directly to me or to help help you answer the question? That or... was to you. Oh wow. Okay. Uh -huh. okay. That was to you. Okay. Yeah. Uh-huh. And there's one guy up here who thinks he has to talk more than others. <laughs> Anyways. <laughs> Thank you for sharing that with me. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, that was more to that's your message. Um Okay, so anyways, I um I have people fill fill out a pre session questionnaire ahead of time. I want to know the more information I have about the animals, the deeper I can go. I'm I'm more of an introvert, so if I'm in a crowd in a, in a, and I don't really go to parties too often, but if I'm at maybe a fundraiser or something and there's a lot of people there, I clam up. I don't know how I I'm not good at going out and and beginning a conversation. So I like to have as much information about, especially the topic, what are we focusing on? Um, I can get an idea of how the people feel about their animals when they come to me. So I could say, yes, I guess I do vet them. Um, um, but really, the people that do come to me love their animals so much, they want to know more. Um, and so, um, they, they already, they are pretty empathetic, empathetic, empathetic. Yeah. Empathetic. They have empathy. <laughs> um, but, um, yeah, it, cause yeah, really people, people don't come to me that, that aren't in, in integrity with their animals. Um, I have a hard time, you know, with, with, um, people that, that, abuse their animals. I think most of us, most of us do, but, um, yeah, I usually get, I usually see the animals after they've been rescued from bad places. Um, that that's when the people come to me and ask for help. How can I help? How can I, how can I make them feel better? How can I, um, help them understand that this is where they live now? Um, and so I do a lot of work with rescues. Okay. I, I mean, I could imagine that anyone who didn't treat their pet right wouldn't be interested in knowing their feelings, yeah. right? So yeah. I assume you attract uh -huh. 
you know, a lot more people who are empathetic and caring towards animals. Yep. Okay. Yeah, that makes I a lot of I sense. Do. Yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. Okay. Uh -huh. Um, are you able to talk to animals who crossed over to the other side? Yes. That's another thing that I, that I do quite often. Mm. Um, um, I would say I talk to rescue, rescue animals and animals that have crossed over. That's mostly a, a lot of what I, what I do. Um, I, um, the animals after, after they've crossed, and again, now I can feel my heart opening because there's always so much love. And what they show me is they are in a place of pure, unconditional love. And they also show me um, every animal I've talked to has told me they've been greeted by somebody. So we never pass alone. There's always somebody on the other side that greets us. Um, it could be, um, and, and they also tell me that the moment of our transition is the most important moment of our life. It's not our birth. Our birth is very important and very joyful on, on this side. Oh, a new baby's coming in, no matter what species, you know, oh, oh, look at the baby, look at the puppies, look at the baby, you know, the humans, um, you know, we're, it's a joyful thing. Um, our passing, our transition is um, very, very joyful for all on the other side. Um um, there's always somebody that greets us. It could be some, some animals have shown me, um, that they're, it's like almost like a parade for them. Um, uh, they, so many rows, go, go, go. <laughs> um, um, so some animals show me that, um, that there's, there's a, almost like a parade. There's animals and people and other beings, light beings lining the streets and they, they get to be their own parade and they are the most important soul at that moment. Um, then they, the other thing they show me is the first three days after our transition, um, is, um, we go into, um, uh, what I call what's a, a kind of a recalibration of our energy, and they're in so much white light that I can't see them. I call it the spiritual car wash, um, <laughs> because sometimes it looks like a rectangular box of pure white light, and I can see them going in like somebody driving into a car wash, and I can see them coming out you know, like, like they're finished with their car wash, but I don't know exactly what happens there. It's very, very intimate and very personal. I would imagine that we go over our life and see all the beauty of it. Even in the hard times, we see how it benefited our soul and how it, 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 um, grew our soul or advanced our soul. Um, um, even, you know, so even, even the bad, the, the other day, uh, again, so I've had a lot of conversations. I I'm quite busy. Um, but the other day I talked to a, a cat that passed and she, um, her person actually rescues, her person rescues feral cats. And she rescued this cat, um, who was, um, uh, who was only with her for three weeks because it was hurt. And she took it to the vet and, you know, they tried to make it comfortable and she wasn't progressing. So they helped her with her transition. Um, uh, but this cat, this, this uh, young, she was only about a year and a half. And she showed me um, the most, when she made her transition, she was in the most beautiful space. At first I couldn't see her, even though it was more than three days um, that she had passed. I couldn't see her. She was in so much white light. And all of a sudden the, what I saw was one paw sticking out and then a leg sticking out and then her face sticking out of this white light. And, um, she said she was in a place that, um, she could stay as long as she wanted to, to recuperate from the drama and the trauma of that life. She recognized what she came there for. Um, and, and mainly it was, um, uh, to help the lady that, that helped her and the vet that helped her, um, 
her her pain helped them to open their hearts um but she was also able it there was um the thing that she learned in that white light was that she came here to um find her strength and courage and now in the next life she will work on trust um and and so she's in this this white light um and i experienced it one time on a retreat in brazil that i went to and she told me you know what this is like um I was um, on a retreat in Brazil and I was sitting with um, about 20 other people and we were in meditation and the love that came in to that room to into my body was so big and so beautiful. I have experienced similar since then, but not that big. I believe that I was given a glimpse of that heavenly space um, and she told me this is where I am right now and I can stay here as long as I want and I said oh because that when I was feeling that that those feelings in that meditation I wanted to stay there the rest of my life it's like I don't ever want to move from here and then somebody said tap 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 it's time to move on and go have lunch and it's like, dang <laughs> I came back <laughs> oh, I can but, only um, imagine how peaceful yeah. that was. Uh, so she, yeah, so that's where that cat is right now and ready to um, work on trust in her next life. Um, and so the woman helped her begin that phase who helped her and brought her to the vet. Wow. Um, so they're connected this lifetime and the next. Wow. So that gets us into the idea of reincarnation. So I, I'm assuming you know, animals also have lessons that they need to learn. I never thought about it that way because, you know, people say human beings, we have lessons to learn. We have karma that we have to release mm -hmm. and undo. So it could be the same for animals. That's what it sounds like. That's correct. Oh, wow. Uh, yeah. The other thing about um, death that the animals show me is we all go to the same place. We're all in the same, same place in heaven. We the way I see it, the way that it visually comes to me in my mind's eye is I see this golden light and that is the light of God, whatever God is, a golden light. It's pure to me, it's pure golden light, so beautiful and so powerful and so love filled that we can't we don't experience it here. And around the white around the golden light is the white light and we can work in the white light here, here on Earth. But in that white light, I see all of our souls as sparkly diamonds, some really big diamonds, some littler diamonds, but all diamonds. And it doesn't matter what species we are. We all go back to the same place. Um, so a lot of times humans, we we feel, you know, that, and maybe we're taught that we are above animals. We are a higher, um, you know, um, um a higher species our brains are different and yes we have you know we have opposable thumbs and we we can create things that the animals can't but in 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 this world of of god whatever that is the world of god we are all the same it doesn't matter how many legs we have and we all do come we have um specific goal, goals and specific contracts with each other um um i visualize what if what if we sat in the ethers um in the heavenly cafe and made a contract with each other i love you so much i will teach you uh, uh, about um compassion somebody else might say i love you so much i will teach you about jealousy i love you so much i will teach you about anger i will love you so much i will teach you about forgiveness and so on. And we come here and um, as we incorporate and we come into these bodies, we have spiritual amnesia because if we remembered some of those contracts when we were born, I know I would say, well, I'm not staying here. That's crazy. You know? I'm not doing that. I don't yes. know what I was thinking, but I'm not doing that. 
I agree. Sometimes I'm like, oh, I wish I could remember, but sometimes you can tell when like there's something that seems like a lesson that you need to learn, but it's mm-hmm. always so annoying. Like, oh, why can't I remember the contract? If I did make a contract, yeah. why can't I remember it? That would be so much easier. Uh, um, so unfortunately, easy. just, I know. Yeah. <laughs> not, I'm just not going to even walk over to your space and talk to you. <laughs> yeah, I already know what I have to learn and I've learned it just by doing it. So, um, no, thank you for sharing that. That's that's definitely fascinating. And, you know, I'm sure people are listening to this, right, and thinking, or at least I'm thinking, but I'm I'm sure somebody else is thinking it, is, you know, a lot of people eat meat, right? So cows, chicken, and all that stuff, right? So have you talked to those type of animals? And and how do they feel about that? Do they feel like that's part of their purpose? Or is it something that they wish we'd stop doing? Um, It's, they come here, a lot of them, it's part of their purpose to be um, part of us. Um, so when we, when we eat meat, it, it, the protein, their protein becomes our protein. Their bodies become our bodies. Their spirits become our spirits. Um, they of course wish to be treated humanely. Um, but they, um, they have, they, they, they do come with the purpose of not, not being here that long. Um, you know, they, they, they they're not here to um to to live out really long lives they're here their purpose is to come and experience what this place is and then go home um you know so some of us some of us have long lives and some of us have very short lives um we're here to experience i just wanted to dip my toe in and see what that water felt like i don't want to swim you know, I just want to dip my toe in. Um, and so they, you know, they have, um, and they do have, you know, so other animals do have more, um, uh, not limited thinking, more, um, simple is the word I want to use. Their, their, their thoughts are simple. I'm here, I'm grazing, I'm getting to meet you. I'm enjoying your company. It's time to go you know, so, um, so yeah, so they have a simpler, maybe their mission is, is simple, but still much needed. You know, it doesn't mean they're not needed in the world. Yeah. So, um, they, they come to experience and, and, um, I've, I've talked to, um, animals, um, who some people want me to help, would like me to help them find their animal in reincarnation. Um, I do, I've, helped you know and that at first that was like oh I don't know this is kind of out of my you know my normal thinking but the more that I do this work the more I realize that everything is possible um and so um so they might reincarnate as okay I came as a cow uh, maybe I'll be a horse next time or, or you know or a cat or uh you know Oh, a wild, you know, maybe I'll, I'll be, um, something that jumps really high or, you know, um, and so I, I have, I talked to, um, um, to a a rabbit once who was, um, he showed me this whole line of animals that he was, um, he was, he was, a I can't remember exactly, but he was, he was a horse, a dog, a cat, a, um, a leopard, uh, um, he was another rabbit. Uh, uh, um, he was, so he showed me this whole long line of animals. And, um, as, as he, as I saw the line, um, the cat moved out of the line and, and presented itself. The cat, um, so the rabbit was, was, um, was the woman's cat when she was a child and came back to be with her as a rabbit. <laughs> that's so, beautiful yeah. uh-huh yeah so it's fascinating I just you know I have to let go of everything I think I know and watch it like it's like I'm watching a movie yes and just you know let's see what where the day takes us let's see what happens yes I love that you said the more you do this work the more you think you know something the less 
you know, mm-hmm. which again is fascinating because like you said, anything is possible. I firmly believe that anything is possible. I'm constantly reminded of that all the time. So um, thank you for sharing that story. It, it, something else I wanted to ask is, are animals, um, well, there are two parts to this question. I'll start with this one. Can animals be spirit guides as well? Once they cross over to the other side, can we can we have them as service guides and i don't know what your thoughts are on spirit guides but people talk Mm -hmm. about spirit guides as they could be i guess angels or loved ones who've passed away so i just want to know if animals could also serve as our spirit guides yes they can and i do definitely believe in guides i talk to my guides all the time that's what helps me do this work i ask for help please help me be the best that i can be please help me um, to understand this animal and help them for their highest good. I always, always ask for help. But um, as far as animals being our our spirit guides, yes. Um, I've also, um, there's many parts to this question. I have done um, some, I did some shamanic journey work with my mentor and we uh, went, um, we found our totem animals. We would go to the lower, lower world and search for our totem animals and bring them back and then talk to them. So elephant is one of my totem, totem animals. Um, so she helps me with, um, she's very motherly and she helps me with, with family things and, um, and, and, um, nurturing. Um, I, um, one of my cats, um, one time, um, my cat Boots, I was so attached to him, so attached uh, to him. And after he passed, I was very, very sad. Uh, but I always have to have animals in my household. So our next cat, Jiggs, um, came, I was cooking dinner and Jiggs came and sat down in the place where Boots always sat in the kitchen and watched me. Boots always came and sat in the kitchen and would watch me cook. And I asked Jiggs, I said, how do you know how to do that? And he said, Boots is acting as as my spirit guide right now. He's telling me what will soothe you. And so I'm doing that. So Boots was telling him, go sit, go sit there. She'll understand. Um, And so, yes, our animals, um, our animals um, will help us. They never leave us. They don't leave. When Once we've passed, we can be everywhere and nowhere all at the same time. And so uh, I've often seen them um, walking, walking with their man on the right. You know, the, he's, she's walking on your right side. And then maybe with the, his wife, um, she, you know, he, she likes to... Um, but he he likes to he likes to um, follow you around the house, or he likes to sit with you by next to your chair while you're reading. Um, so they can be. It's not like here where we have this singular body. They're just they're pure energy, and like I was saying about our how our energy flows, like we're the radio station, the radio tower, and we're broadcasting. They can be broadcasting everywhere and nowhere. Um, so yes, they are with us. That's um, beautiful. Your story about um, your your cat boots leading or guiding your new cat, just it gave me goosebumps. Wow, that's such a beautiful story. Um, so with another question that feeds into what we've been talking about is just the idea of animals being intuitive. So I've seen instances where let's say a dog meets a new person and they don't like them. So they start barking. They look really scared. They can kind of tell this person dangerous Mm -hmm. or like if there's something coming, right? Like the animals will be able to pick up if there's a natural disaster about to happen or some great shift. And I just want to hear from your perspective. Is is that true? Are are animals very intuitive? Yes, they are. Mm -hmm. Yes, they are. And I'm looking over here because now a chipmunk just came and sat on the chair next to me. Oh, (laughs) They all want to be involved. Yes. <laughs> Something wonderful is happening here. <laughs> I love um, it. Yeah, so animals are very, very intuitive, and they do see energy as well. So they will they can see our auras. They can see if there's, you know, if there's negative things in our, in our space. Um, they, they can see, um, uh, 
and maybe not every of all of them, but I think the great majority of them can can see and sense when somebody means harm and when somebody means good. Um, and they'll they'll use our our body language as one one way, but they can also see auras and they can see spirits and they can see, you know, negative entity attachments or, or things that, you know, that um, they might be warning somebody that you've picked up somebody else's gunk. You know, that's a lot of times that's what I see a negative entity attachment as somebody else's anger, somebody else's, you know, stuff. Um, and then we ask for a clearing. I always use it. I do use a clearing statement as well uh, to clear energy and make sure that my aura, my energy field is clear at all times. There, there's so many questions I could continue to ask you about, but the biggest lessons I've taken away from this is that animals are here to open our hearts more and it is possible to telepathically com communicate with them. So obviously, some people have it a lot stronger than others. You'd be one of the people who have it very strongly. But I think a lot of animal owners, I, I think after you spend some time with an animal, you can kind of like pick up how they're feeling about mm -hmm. something. Um, mm -hmm. So thank you so much for sharing your work. I just talking to you and just seeing you, I can see that you're really engulfed in the light. And it's just such an amazing, warm presence. Um it's, it's a very, very good feeling. So I appreciate you for sharing this space with me and hopefully we can continue these conversations in the future. But I think this was a great conversation. Thank you. Yeah. I do. It was a wonderful conversation and I love that the animals, the wild ones came in so often to yeah. help us. Now it's quiet. There's no birds at the feeder. It's like they know we're done. You yeah, know? yeah, it's beautiful. Um, I have to ask you if you've shifted in perspective on anything recently. Oh, yeah. Um, the more, the more that I um that I do this, um, the deeper I feel the love. The more often I feel my heart opening. Uh, the more often I feel at peace. And, um, you know, I've, I've, uh, I often think about, you know, raising the vibration in 2012. Um, it was the end of the Mayan calendar. And, and there was um, a lot about um, the shift of from sacred masculine to sacred feminine. And I was I had been working towards that for several years of oh we've got to raise raise the vibration and you know bring in love and cuz everything's going to change in 2012. Well, it probably did, but it felt the same the next day, you know, I have December 12, 2012, December 13th was like, huh. Okay. <laughs> um but um what I do, what I feel now compared to the way I felt then is, um, you know, I more and more often I fall into, um, which I, I truly love, let's see where the day takes us. How can I be of service today? And I talk to my guides way more often than I did then. We are not alone we have we are surrounded by um helpers those that want to help us to bring in bring in this light into this higher dimension into higher consciousness and um and so it's really i don't have to work so hard at getting there i just have to be there just feel it to just feel uh, heaven on earth Oh, what would I that love be that. like for you? You know, what mm -hmm. would that, for me sitting here, I'm feeling my whole body vibrating. It feels so good. I feel, I, I feel uplifted from this conversation. And this is, you know, this moment is what we've been waiting for. Yes. It's already here. Mm. I just, uh, you know, need to, um, remember that we're already living it. It's already here. Um, mm. And just, you know, and share it. And how can I be of service today? Wow. 
So, yeah, so there is a great shift happening right now. I can feel it. More and more of, of my friends are starting their own business in, in energy mm -hmm. work. Mm -hmm. It's become, since I, um, uh, I, I became a Reiki master in 2004, I think it was 2004, mm -hmm. no, hardly anybody, you know, that I was in contact with knew what Reiki was. Now it's mainstream. It feels more mainstream. Animal communication feels more mainstream. When I say to, when people ask me what I do for a living and I say, I'm a telepathic animal communicator, they say, oh, how fascinating. They used to look at me like I had two heads. You know, <laughs> oh, how fascinating. So really the shift, we are, we are all making the shift. We're all doing it. It's a matter of noticing that we're here and we're doing this thing. That um, was incredible. Thank you. I mean, that just the word, what you said is like, instead of working so hard to get to that place of peace or that feeling of heaven on earth is just, you have to just allow yourself to be still in it. It's already here. Mm -hmm. Wow. Mm -hmm. Wow. That, that really resonated. One of my favorite words is allow. Mm. <laughs> mm. Be in allow flow. Yeah. Be, be in the flow. Allow it. Yes. Yeah. We you're right. Worthy. We are mm. all worthy. We are all here worthy of that love, no matter what. Yes. I agree. And to your point about we're all making the shift, it's interesting to see how um, people are accepting of these topics now, even if they don't understand, they're more open mm -hmm. to it. Mm -hmm. So we're really connecting to that spirit side of us, which I think is important. We, I just don't think we can continue living life without acknowledging that side of who we are. That's where a lot of the peace is. So thank you again so much for stopping by the show, Lynn, where can people find you if they want to learn more about your work or get in contact with you? Oh, yes. Thank you. Um, so um, animalspirittalker.com. Um, I have, I have my website and there's, um, you can go, they can go to the, you can go to the contact page, scroll down, schedule appointments or leave me a message. Um, I always answer. Um, sometimes it takes me a couple of days, but I always answer. Um, and so, yeah, so animalspirittalker.com. Awesome. I'll be leaving the link in the show notes. Thank you, Lynn, for stopping by Shifting Dimensions. Thank you, Jimmy. It's been an honor. <laughs>